Want to win a copy of Heartland of Darkness to add to your collection? Stick around to the end of the video to find out how. Seeking an escape from the hustle and bustle of big city life, Paul Henson and his teen daughter move to the small town of Copperton, Ohio, where Paul purchases the local newspaper. And what a first day it is at the new paper. He hires a receptionist and a reporter within the first five minutes. And he's already got his first big scoop when a local man turns up dismembered in the woods. And I thought small towns were supposed to be safe. But that's not the case in Copperton. Because Copperton is overrun... With Satanists. And these Satanists got sacrificing to do. Because... That's what Satanists do, I guess. Heartland of Darkness is notable for at one time being considered a lost movie. Most lost movies are either the director's cuts or an alternate cut of a previously released film. Think of Event Horizon or 2001 A Space Odyssey. But there are a few actual lost movies. Movies that were completed and just never released, or movies that were abandoned at some point during production. Jerry Lewis's The Day the Clown Cried, for instance. And then you have Heartland of Darkness, a.k.a. Blood Church, a.k.a. Fallen Angels. The brainchild of college student Eric Swellstad, Heartland of Darkness, originally titled Fallen Angels, was his master's thesis, cast and crewed by fellow students and Central Ohioans, and of course Linnea Quigley. Eventually, Swellstad ran out of money during production, and the film was abandoned. After a number of false starts to finish the film and get it distributed over the intervening years, Visual Vengeance has come to the rescue with this killer new release for the film. Heartland of Darkness is an ambitious movie. Maybe a little too ambitious, but I'll get into that more later. The number of locations Swellstead and crew had access to, combined with the number of characters and the robust nature of the story, makes Heartland of Darkness feel like a mini-epic. It's also a well-made film with plenty of stylish touches and some nice and nasty gore effects. Sure, it's a little rough around the edges here and there with some not-so-special visual effects, and the acting ranges from not bad to bad. One of my favorite performances comes from the actor who played the town sheriff. And I'm not trying to be mean here or anything. I mean, the guy was clearly not a trained thespian, but his line delivery goes something like this. What the hell are you doing in this town? I told you we don't want no trouble in this town. Now you hold it right there. You're under arrest. I also found it pretty funny how the sheriff would allow the newspaper editor to be present at a crime scene, a very fresh crime scene at that, but also to allow him to kneel down and hover over the dismembered remains while smoking a cigarette. And remember, this guy is brand new to the town, and literally it's his first day as the editor of the newspaper. Now that's what I call freedom of the press. Linnea Quigley is at peak levels of cuteness here. Now, I know she's supposed to be evil and all, and I know the devil is a liar, but as Stevie Nicks said, tell me lies. Tell me sweet little lies. Quigley plays a local school teacher who dresses like a Motley Crue groupie. If I'd been in her class, my attendance would have been exemplary. My grades would have still sucked, though, but I would have been there every day with bells on. You know, I never quite understood that little idiom. I know it means you're supposed to be eager and excited for something, but I, would your eagerness and excitement ring like bells? I don't... Nick Baldazar delivers a domineering performance as the cult's charismatic leader who doesn't take kindly to anything. The Reverend is also one of those villain characters whose enunciation is so on point. He wants his directives to be crystal clear to his underling so that there's no chance of a miscommunication. He tells you what he wants, when he wants it, in a precise, succinct manner. He does not want to repeat himself. He does not have time to repeat himself. God help you. If he has to repeat himself, where are the negatives? Prepare the virgin sacrifice. Go get Taco Bell. I made up that last one. I've got Taco Bell on the brain because 
Jeremy wants to eat Taco Bell. Every single day. Heartland of Darkness comes with an abundance of charm, and I give it a big A for effort. But to coin one of my grandmother's favorite colloquialisms, Heartland of Darkness is a little too big for its own britches. The one hour and 41 minute runtime is a bit much for a movie like this, and because the story has a tendency to chase its own tail, it feels significantly longer. The movie even has a perfectly good ending, but just refuses to stop. We do get a cool impalement in the end, though. Still, I had a wonderful time with Heartland of Darkness, and I'm overjoyed to see it get this kind of release from Visual Vengeance. I mean, how many releases come with its own prayer cloth? I'm serious. This release comes with its very own Heartland of Darkness prayer cloth. (laughs) As with all other Visual Vengeance releases that I've checked out, we also get an assortment of retro video store style stickers. We get a cool poster featuring lovely Linnea. And we get a small booklet slash sleeve with a essay on the film by Tony Strauss. The sleeve is reversible. On one side, we have the new artwork for the film. On the reverse, we have the artwork for Blood Church. As far as picture quality and sound quality are concerned, this release comes with a new SD master sourced from original tape and film elements supervised by the director. I thought the picture quality here was pretty good, especially considering the source materials. There's rough spots here and there, but overall, I thought it looked good. The audio quality does fluctuate. There's moments where the music is just as loud, if not louder, than the dialogue. And there are moments where the overall volume of the film noticeably decreases. But for the most part, the audio sounded clean and clear. I'd give both the picture quality and the audio quality on this release a solid 3.5 out of 5. As far as extras are concerned, first up we have Deeper Into Darkness, the making of Heartland of Darkness. It's 38 minutes and 39 seconds in length. It includes interviews with writer-director Eric Swellstead, cinematographer Scott Spears, production manager Tom Bowman, actor Nick Baudissar, and more. Swellstead discusses uh, what inspired the film, the satanic panic of the 1980s, the shooting locations, and raising the money. They discuss how the film started as a thesis film for Swellstead, which he got an A on. Uh, They discuss shooting inside a real church and shooting scenes that probably shouldn't have been shot inside a real church. They discuss the long, grueling hours, the gore effects, the dangers of using real pig intestines, how wonderful Linnea Quigley was to work with, and they discuss the film's long road to completion and more. We also have the Deeper Into Darkness trailer, so after you watch the, the making of documentary, you can watch the trailer for the making of documentary. Next, we have Linnea Quigley Remembers, a 2021 interview with the actress. It's fi- five minutes and 52 seconds in length. Uh, she shares her fond memories of shooting Heartland of Darkness. She discusses how much she loves meeting fans and how excited she is for Heartland of Darkness to finally be getting released. Next, we have a vintage local news interview with Linnea Quigley. It's 19 minutes and 43 seconds in length. We get behind the scenes image gallery and two trailers. Next, we have the original 1990 work print under the film's original title, Fallen Angels, uh, with optional director's commentary. It comes in at 36 minutes and 59 seconds in length. We get the making of Fallen Angels, a vintage cast and crew news ca- featuring vintage cast and crew newscast interviews. It's 21 minutes and 23 seconds in length. We get a vintage TV spot. We also get the Blood Church Vintage Distribution promo video, which is 13 minutes and one second in length. Length. We get a behind the scenes of Reverend Donovan's death, which is two minutes and 37 seconds in length. We get Phantasm Magazine's director spotlight on Eric Swellstead. We have the visual vengeance trailer for the film. And we get two audio commentaries, the first with Eric Swellstead, Nick Baudissaire, Scott Spears, and Joe Wofel, and the second with Tony Strauss of Wang's Chop Magazine. This is one hell of a release for Heartland of Darkness from the lovely folks over at Visual Vengeance. And if you'd like to win your very own copy of Heartland of Darkness, post a comment down in the comment section letting me know what some of your favorite holiday horror films are. I'll randomly select one commenter and reply to their comment, letting them know that 
they've won their very own copy of Heartland of Darkness on Blu-ray from Visual Vengeance. If you've seen Heartland of Darkness or if you've already picked up this release from Visual Vengeance, let me know your thoughts on the film down in the comments section below. If you like this video, please leave it a thumbs up and share it on social media. If you're not following me on social media, those links are in the description. As always, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Take care and until next time, peace. Thank you to all my patrons and channel members. I appreciate your generosity and support of my channel. Become a patron today and have a say in what content appears on my channel. Join me for monthly live streams and much more. Become a channel member today and get access to exclusive badges and emotes to use when I stream. Both those links are in the description. Say hello to the internet, Jeremy. Hello to the internet.